All right, so this is Fry. This solo is really focusing on reading bass clef and treble clef at the same time, but then also learning how to use independent stroke. So that's where we're trying not just to get double verticals, but we're trying to learn how to move one mallet at a time. So make sure you watch your handbook video over the four mallet techniques, specifically independent stroke and learning how to move one hand at a time. Now quickly, we always have the plane set here and then when you're doing your independent stroke one mallet at a time, we're trying to keep the other mallets on the plane on the same level. You don't want to be moving both hands. You want to be rotating and keeping the other mallet in the air. So the inner mallets are the same mirror image. This would be a thumb rotation. So rotating like this. Okay, again, this is very quick. You can watch the other video. And the other, the outside mallets one and four are more of a knuckle rotation. Okay, so that's what we're trying to focus on here. Whenever you're doing independent strokes, you've got to put a little more pop and piston to get the sound quality you want. Now, we start on the measure one with Fry, with Mezzo Forte. Let's go and get our mallet set up at the plane. Now, we can think ahead on a couple things here. Okay, we know we have F to start with our two mallet. I think you should keep your right hand at about a comfortable fourth because it just changes melody hands. There's nothing crazy as far as the transition. So get a comfortable interval in your right hand. Now your left hand, as you see in measure 9 and 10, uh, 9 to 10, the last note you play in your uh, left hand is middle C, and then you're about to play. Your first note you play in your one mallet, so measure 10 is F. So go ahead and set up that interval right away in a fifth, which we're used to. A fifth, so that way that transition is very easy. You don't have to move your hand at all. It's just going back and forth. Okay? So set a fifth here. Set a comfortable fourth in your right. As we're looking, the two mallet, one, two, three, four. The two mallet is here, the second one from the left. Okay? And it's a thumb rotation. Everything else is set on the plane up. Okay? And it's a decrescendo. F, 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 now, as you can see, the Fs just continue playing in measure two and three, and the right hand moves. So the right hand is the moving line, so the right hand is the melody. So already you want to make sure that your right hand is like here and your left hand is here as far as the mix goes. So we don't want them to really be even like this. We really want that F just kind of in the background. switches. We're back to mezzo forte and now the melody in measure four is in the left hand. And then it's back to F. So your right hand is just kind of doing the G the whole time in the background. So just practice, just pick two notes, F and A, and practice doing quarter notes in the left hand and while you're doing eighth notes in the right hand and bringing out the quarter notes and then switch. That might be the first step. Okay, so you can kind of get over that coordination. All right, so let's do measures one, two, and three and the transition into four because you got to work on your transitions. One and two and ready and go. And taper off. higher and then right down on measure four. Again, and go. Start strong and then fade away. Now bring up the right. Now your right hand's thinking low and bring up the left. Here is measure four and five and then transition to six. Ready and go and So now we kind of got a similar thing going on. The melody changes slightly. So make sure you learn your right hand. A, rest, rest. A, C, B flat, A, G, back to the G. 
down. Okay, and then we're just going to have our low left eighth notes the whole time. Measure six and seven and your transition to E and G. Ready and go. kids accidentally don't do two rests in measure six make sure you play what you see okay now here is measure eight so again you got the constant right g's and you got a new melody in your left you have e rest e rest e flat c and now we have our first forte and our first one mallet okay all right here we go measure eight nine and that transition so you get to work on that transition at the end there uh, i guess technically it would be Don't just guess it out. Here's eight to the downbeat of ten. One, two, ready, go. Here it comes. Okay, pause that until you can do that. So now, measure ten, you got this forte de crescendo. Okay, uh, again, rotate at your knuckle. You're just hitting A and your three mallet, and then you're about to switch to your four mallet. So the three hit. And now the four hits the same note. And then, it's, then we have a melody with our four mallet rotation. So we're just, again, this is technique through music. This is from Mark Ford's book, Technique Through Music. So we're trying to, through the music, just focus on the independent strokes. Here is measure 10 melody. Right hand. Ready? Go. Three, rest, switch. Let's put that with the A crescendo to one. Ready? Go. Practice that transition to F to G, and then you stop on C. just did our one metal on G and now we're about to do B flat G and now we're about to do B flat E flat now be careful so that is the the second leisure line above the bass clef so think about it like this the treble clef and the bass clef look like this but really you should think of it like this and so they call it middle C because that's the one leisure line between the treble and bass clef. But there's so much space between the treble and bass clef, so it looks like there's more notes that should be there. So if middle C is also the first leisure line above the bass clef, then that next line, that's a measure 13, that's technically the same thing as the first line of the treble clef. So that's E. That's your first line treble clef E. It just looks a little strange. All right, so let's learn that melody. We know that this, the, in measure 12, that you have your four mallet just kind of churning away at C's and then it goes back to A. Okay, so let's learn that left hand melody. So we have G on the one mallet, and then we're going to B flat, E, G, C, back to the F. So again, we have a fifth in that transition. Okay, make sure you can play the left hand melody alone first. Now let's try to put those together. Measure 12, 13, and transition to 14. One, two, ready, go. melody in measure 14 you have a rest rest a c b flat d c e now first time we do eight notes on e okay now what's the left hand doing just holding the drone f until it goes back up to f like we did earlier from measure 11 to 12. one two ready go So now measure 16, we got hold these drone E's while the left hand switches to the two mallet. So you have one mallet, two mallet. Similar. Now we're just going up the scale. Okay. All right. So now let's look at the second page. We have two, three, two, three. Now you might want, you might try to start stacking these. I really don't really feel the need with the speed we're gonna go, so I would just piston all this. And aim for the center. 
So start low and crescendo. Now make sure you are ready for that transition. You, have, you still have about a fifth here. So transitioning to measure 20. Let's let's look ahead and do some planning. As you can see in measure 20, you have low F and you have C and the one and the four. So put those mouths down for a second. You have F and you have C, okay? Now look at measure 21. You have middle C and you have F. So if you combine that, what are you seeing? F, C, F, C. So that's really the unit that you're thinking in measure 20 and 21. So be able to play those chords together first, like eighth notes. measure 22 and 23. Let's combine these. You have the one mallet on the G. You have the four mallet on the B flat. We'll talk about where to hit that in a second. And then on measure 23 you have middle C again. That didn't change. And then E. So that's the combined chord right there. Okay, so let's play that. G, C, E, B flat. I say to hit the center. I actually want you to hit on the secondary position on the corner, the edge of the edge, right here for the B flat, and then hit above the resonator uh, right here. And then for your left hand, I hit below the resonator in the G, and then above the resonator for the C. So you're, you're, you can turn your shoulders at a slant and your feet at a slant, so your elbows can stay nice to your side here, okay? All right, so learn how to play those chords in transition. So you have your F and C. So that's the way I would learn it first. Then all you have to do is realize you're just doing independent stroke from there, outsides, insides. Now you can even think ahead here. G and B flat, and you have your C. So if you can do this chord, you're going to think about it a lot better. Okay, the second time is piano. Now I would just learn 26. This is left lead, by the way, because we're starting on two mallet. I would learn it um, with just two mallets first. So you know you're going up the scale. It's very similar to Foxtrot or Green. So it goes Forte the four first time in 27. It's the same thing, but it's Mezzo Forte. When I play softer, I like to go to the edge to help me play softer. It's like an echo, okay? Then 28, as you can see, goes down stepwise motion. Okay, so that's pretty easy to learn. Now that's with our inside mouths, two and three the whole time. So for measure 24, eighth notes crescendo, and then I'll get into it. because when you do, I want you to aiming for the center for all those notes. Obviously, for the forte stuff, I'm aiming for the center. But then when it is piano, when it's softer, I'm going to hit the edge to help me not accidentally accent those notes. 
all that's left is the last measure, which is kind of the hardest section. So this is the way I would do it. First of all, let's work backwards. Let's look at measure 21. We end with our two mallet on F. And this kind of home base, that's where we started, that's where we end. Two mallet on F. Okay, then we go down, and the top note, the fourth mallet, goes to that F. Okay, so it just switches. That's the first thing to realize. Okay, then look at the bottom. If you just do bass clef, that's F, A, and then we're doing C and F. So that's just your arpeggio. So we're going to have a retardando, so it'll help you slow down and really find that before it doesn't sound real calm at the end. Now, the rest of it is kind of contrapuntal motion and sometimes the same motion. So measure 30, the trick is to learn it together and learn the outside motions and inside motions together before thinking about it all tunnel vision one note at a time. So I would learn this with just plugging down your mallets, okay, with just two mallets in your hand. Measure 30, F and G. That's your first group. Now, your left hand moves down to E, and your right hand moves up to A. Got it? And then we're staying in the key of F, so you keep going down to D, up to B flat. Okay, then if you keep going, you know that the D goes down to C, and the right goes to C. So now we're finally on an octave. Let's look what happens after that. So we keep going. So our left hand goes to B flat and our right hand goes to D. So let's add that. Gotta get used to all that opposite motion. B flat, B flat. Okay, otherwise you can just spread out on the bottom. Okay, now after the B flat and D, that's our highest note for the right hand. Our left hand continues down to A, but our right hand is going to move down there. So that's a critical. Transition. So you're going to think both go down after the B flat D. Down. So let's add that. Both down. Both down. Okay. So then let's look what's. We're almost done. Now that's the lowest part for your left hand. So we're going to go back up to B flat. And our right hand is just going to continue down. So now we're on octave B flats. So earlier we had octave C's. Then out. Then both down. Our left hand continues to go up to C, and our right hand actually skips for the first time. If we don't play A after B flat, we go down to G. We kind of skip. But that's kind of easy because that's a C and a G. And then we get to home B, bass F. Okay, so you might just want to practice B flat to the end. the video until you can do that and this whole thing decrescendos and then we get down to our last chord now once you can do that split it up again just two mallets okay and you can slow down if that makes it easier to think about but also it sounds musical okay and then your chord at the end now once you're comfortable with that Get your formula like grip in there and do your inside motion. So you have. And that's how we end it. It's time to do a run through. Okay, this is Fry. It says 120, but we're going to go nice medium 90. You can always go faster, but let's go a medium speed. You just kind of get all the details. And here we go. One, two, three.